and thank you, Bob. Uh, I have uh, been proud to be vegan for the past 34 years, and I'll tell you, I've never felt proud of it. Uh, that today, uh, the remarkable shining spirits that have come here and shared their life with us, uh, everyone has been an inspiration to me today. I feel more inspired and energized than ever. Uh, for uh, both my contemporaries and the younger people here who are picking up this torch and spreading the word around uh, for their own sakes and the kids coming after them. And uh, uh, my hope for uh, success is certainly, uh, certainly increased today. And uh, it's a real privilege and honor to be here. And again, uh, thanks to the brilliance and, and uh, industry of, uh, of Bob and Go Vegan Radio and all your team who helped make this happen. Thank you so much. So Bob asked me uh, if I wanted to speak. I said, sure. He said, I said, what do you want me to talk about? He says, well, how about the, the uh, persuasive points, the best health arguments you can make? And I took that out. I said, okay. Uh, but um, I'm quite, I'm, not, I'm a man of peace. I'm not a big argument guy. And I, didn't, I felt that comfortable using the word argument there. So uh, I turned into health persuasion points here. Uh, but then I had another quandary um, thinking, um, who are, we to, who are we trying to convince you? Um, because I have all these medical reasons about why plant-based diets are helpful, and if you're trying to talk to a skeptical doctor, there are certainly things to say uh, to help convince them. But really, uh, and, and absolutely, the doctors need to be convinced, and uh, they're very, very important. But who really needs to be convinced, of course, is Joe Sixpack. Uh, <laughs> Your neighbor, my neighbor, but it might be your dad, it might be your, your older brother, it might be the guy in the next cubicle, it might be the bus driver, um, people who are out there trying to do good work and live a good life, they don't know, they just don't know, they're still asleep. Unless you've been fortunate enough to have been raised in a vegan household, um, you were brought up eating animal flesh just like I was, and until you know, you don't know. But once you know, then it's something else. But our friends around here, the pre-vegans, uh, they just don't know. And uh, they need to be awakened a bit, help to awaken a bit. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, how you approach both of these folks. So I'm going to start with the doctor. Why should doctors care about vegan diet? Because it is the definitive treatment for our obesity epidemic. We really have to come to grips with this. <clears throat> We are seeing obese people everywhere. You see them on the street, in stores, but you see them in the media. You see them in the TV commercials. You see them in the sitcoms. And obese, obesity is becoming accepted. And there's a bit of a chippy attitude. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm, I'm overweight, I'm fat, but that's just the way I am. You got a problem with it, that's your problem. Get it, you know, uh, working on your own thing. Well, and then a lot of them have lots of smiles on their faces in the, uh, in the TV commercials when they're taking their pills and drive down those cholesterol numbers. You get those numbers you're looking for as if the numbers are going to save you. The numbers are not going to save you. I look and I see what are these people laughing at? Obesity is a disease state. It is not a state of health. Let's uh, get a little scientific here. All of us have been enjoying these wonderful vegan meals uh, this weekend. <clears throat> if you eat a nice, healthy, plant-based meal, and an hour later you draw blood, the blood <clears throat> settles out in the glass too. The red clot goes to the bottom, and the liquid part of the blood, the, uh, the serum, rises up to the top. And this is what your blood should look like after you eat a meal. This is what all the blood in this room uh, would look like because it's lovely lunch that we have. But Joe Sixpack <clears throat> uh, eats food like this, and you have a burgers, fries, and shake, you have a pizza, chicken, olive oil on your salad. All the fat that they're eating, the, the saturated fat in the muscle, the butter fat in the cheese, the egg yolks and the mayonnaise, all this fat loses out into the blood. And for the next five hours, their blood looks like this. This milking material here, this is called lipemia. Lipemia means fat in the blood. And the blood stays this way for about five hours. Not everybody shows it this optically densely, but everybody has a wave of fat that goes to their bloodstream after a fatty meal. Well, how could they not? And, uh, and you can see it. If you give someone a fatty meal 
and uh, you draw off a, a tube of blood every every hour, and you take those five tubes of blood and you put them into a spectrophotometer that measures how milky the serum is getting. You can see it getting milkier and milkier and milkier as the lactosis index takes about five hours for the liver to begin to clear it out of it. Well, reality check with this phenomenon. You know, out of sight, out of mind, it's not out of your bloodstream. Reality check. Most people in Western societies eat animal flesh three times a day. My heavens, people, not even mountain lions eat animal flesh three times a day. But we naked apes in this wealthy society gives ourselves permission for this non-stop flesh orgy. Every five hours, a piece of animal muscle is going down our gullet like ghouls, like zombies. We gotta, oh, I need more than five hours before I don't play. And we do. And bacon and eggs for breakfast go down the gullet, and a wave of fat goes to the bloodstream, and the blood stays fatty all morning to about noontime until the liver can begin to clear it out of there, just in time to send another wave of fat to the bloodstream, and after lunch, the blood stays fatty all afternoon till about 6 o'clock in the evening, just in time to visit the colonel and send another wave of fat to the bloodstream. The blood stays fatty till about 10 o'clock at night till you're heading back to the bedroom, but you stop off at the fridge and send another wave of fat to the bloodstream. And the reality is most Americans are keeping their blood fatty all day. <clears throat> this stuff never clears out of the bloodstream. Well, you keep your blood fatty 30, 40, 50 years. Is there any question about what is going to happen? And there's consequences to this, <clears throat> big consequences to this. <clears throat> there's more than just fat in your blood. There is a witch's brew of health-damaging molecules that set people up for everything from diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, uh, strokes, heart attacks. I don't have time to go into all of those right now. But <clears throat> Going back to the fat in the blood, when your blood is running thick with fat, it starts depositing out all over the body in the artery walls. So I'll show you what that looks like, but it deposits out in the fat stores. That's what the fat depots are for. Now, the abdominal body fat starts getting bigger and bigger, and it's not good. This fat is metabolically active, and it's not your friend. There's two kinds of fat. Uh, the fat under the skin is metabolically active. It makes estrogens, gives women breast lumps, gives them heavy periods, gives guys man boobs, sets them up for prostate cancer. This is not good to have a bunch of subcutaneous fat uh, on your skin. <clears throat> and the fat in the abdomen puts up um, molecules called inflammatory cytokines. They set off inflammatory reactions throughout the body, uh, from arthritis to blood vessels. There is a panoply of diseases um, that are made worse by these inflammatory uh, processes from uh, asthma to cancer. Uh, obesity is a disease state. It is not healthy. It is nothing to laugh about and make jokes about. I tell my people, your body is never not looking. You can't tell your body, no, you're a chicken. No, what was that? You know, like your body doesn't know. Your body knows everything. Shakespeare says, I know self be true. Dr. Clapper says, I know health be true. I know blood be true. Now, the beauty is that a vegan diet is the, a whole food vegan diet is the definitive treatment for this. The trick to keep, get yourself a lean, healthy body is keep your belly full of healthy stuff that doesn't stick to you, and whole plant foods don't do that. Uh, you don't have to eat breakfast, you can have a little fruit if you'd like, but lunches and dinners should be, I hung on the four S clothesline here, soup, salad, steamed greens, and starches. <coughs> Why? Uh, the beauty of a healthy plant-based diet is you eat all the fruit you want and you wind up lean and healthy. Why? Because the calorie density is so low. It's mostly fiber and water that we're eating. And there, a, a baked potato in a salad has 170 calories in it. You eat, can eat 10 of these a day. Uh, who can eat 10 potatoes a day? You can eat 10 of these a day and you're going to get the acidity only eating 700 calories. It's still a weight loss diet. And that's the beauty of this food. That's why most vegans are lean. We'll talk about the lean ones in a minute here. But when people adopt a whole food plant-based diet, the changes are so dramatic. We've all seen it here. Uh, if you stick around long enough, either yourself or your friends who become vegan, you see the beautiful changes that happen. <clears throat> now, the things that you really want to eliminate uh, in all shapes and forms are dairy products. It's baby calf growth food. And cheese is congealed baby calf growth fluid. It is full of estrogens that give women breast lumps, give guys man moves, like little girls go through puberty at age eight. 
and it, it makes you look like a bovine. Look at these two women on the left. Uh, they think they're healthy, but they're dairy eaters. I can see the dairy eaters when they walk in my office door. I can recognize the dairy eaters from the bloat in their faces and the fullness of their neck. Uh, 12 weeks later, the pictures on the right are 12 weeks in each of these same women without the dairy products. You see what happens. You see the bloat leave their faces. You see their jaw lines emerge. It's a beautiful, wonderful change that happens. So, if you want to help your patients, your friends, uh, uh, you start getting leaner, see that the dairy's got to go too. Don't let them linger in, in lacto-veg land. You're not doing them a favor by a long shot. Most vegans get lean. If not, if you are overweight vegan, what's going on? You're doing a couple of things that uh, transgress some rules. You're either eating too many refined carbohydrates. I don't know, I want to eat those carbs. Nothing wrong with carbohydrates in their whole form, whole quinoa, it's not going to make it fat. Um, whole rice, whole beans, these are carbohydrate rich, but as long as they're in their whole form with their fiber, etc., uh, they're not going to make it heavy. But you send it to the miller, they turn it into powder called flour, and you've lost the fiber, uh, and then they uh, uh, turn it into cakes and, and pastries and breads and pastas. Um, fine carbohydrates will keep you stuck. Too much processed food. You know, I see heavy vegans, I know they're usually eating the granola bars and the energy bars, the frozen dinners, and they're living in restaurants. And the Thai food, the Chinese food, goes full of oil uh, and salt, and, and it keeps you stuck. Um, oil is liquid fat in the bottle. There's nothing healthy about olive oil. You don't want to pour it on your food. It's not heart healthy. It makes arteries stiff and thick. Um, and they're, um, see these oils for what they are. Same thing with... Um, with nuts and dried fruits, don't sit in front of the TV and shovel in handfuls of dried apricots and handfuls of cashews. Oh, well, the vegan toys, oh, plant foods, okay, it's healthy. No, it's not. That's gluttony and it's going to keep you stuck. Um, uh, your body wants to start burning fat overnight. If you're eating late at night, you, you prevent your body from getting into fat burning here. So come six or seven in the evening, be done with food already and let your body start burning off some fat. And again, you, and Eating consciously is one thing, unconscious shoveling is something else, and uh, don't become a, uh, a shoveler. If you, uh, if you kick out this stuff that, and fill your belly full of whole, fresh plant foods, you're going to wind up being that healthy. Okay, and so it's the, fun, it's the definitive treatment for our obesity epidemic. It is the, a vegan diet is the only treatment shown to reverse the biggest killer in this country, and that is clogged arteries as atherosclerosis causing heart attacks and strokes. Here's what an artery looks like when it's got these evil plaques uh, pushing in from the, uh, from the artery wall. <laughs> and this is what kills the patient. These are fresh, like, abscesses on the wall that does not show up in a calcium score. Um, sorry for the confusing diagram, but these little particles, these are, this is uh, bad cholesterol, this is LDL cholesterol, uh, usually from a meat-based diet and oxidized with sugar and alcohol. Uh, these oxidized uh, cholesterol particles get into the wall of the arteries. These immune cells called macrophages come in to gobble them up. Uh, when they do, it generates a whole bunch of stuff of, called free radicals, reactive oxygen species. And these are nasty. These inflame the artery walls. And that's what these plaques are. They are gobbled up cholesterol particles full of free radicals and, and inflammatory uh, substances. Um, so what? Well, the so what is that this is, a blood, this is an artery, a lot of blood coming down from the top. And the, um, the, the lining, the epithelial lining starts thinning and, uh, and it cracks, it ruptures, um, exposed cholesterol sets off a clot here and a clot forms and the guy drops dead in the gym uh, from a sudden blockage of his arteries. <laughs> One death every 33 seconds, that's a 9-11 disaster every 24 hours. The good news, a whole food vegan diet will reverse this. Why? Because all those green and yellow vegetables are full of these lovely phytonutrients that neutralize the free radicals. Um, you see the, um, the nasty immune cells start out migrating. Um, they, they leave the plaque. Um, and, uh, and here you see the reversal of it. You see the plaque start getting smaller here. They get smaller and smaller and smaller. You see this lining over the top starts uh, getting thicker and thicker as it starts repairing itself. Your bone marrow is constantly spraying out stem cells that are constantly like new paving stones repaving the inside of your artery. Your bone marrow is always trying to heal your arteries if you'll let it do it. So yes, this is an in, uh, imminently reversible disease. 
They can and do heal, but it takes a whole food vegan diet to do that. If the cardiologist is still letting his patients eat cheeseburgers and fried chicken, they, of course he's going to say, oh, they all get worse. They all need stents. They all need stents. Yes, doctor, because you're not talking about what they're eating. Put them on a whole food vegan diet and watch this disease uh, reverse. Here you see from Dr. Esselstyn's book, uh, here you see a man, a heart surgeon actually, with severe uh, narrowing his artery disease. Put him on a whole food plant-based diet. 30 months later, same artery. You can see the tremendous disease. <laughs> and it's the only thing. So you can stent him up the wazoo till the cows come home. There, it's, there's always going to be another place to stent. It's a total body disease. It has to be cleaned up on the total uh, arterial tree uh, for the diet. Third reason that doctors should care, it, red meat, uh, an animal-based diet, is full of carcinogens that cause cancer. There is a long, dismal history uh, of the association of, um, of animal flesh with uh, all types of cancer, certainly in the, uh, in the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, what happens, uh, the blood pigments in the muscle. Uh, well, once you, once you cook meat, very active cooking meat, creates carcinogens that rub on the gut wall and sets off cancers. But once the hunk of meat gets down into the intestine, the bacteria down there jump into the meat mass and uh, the bacteria start oxidizing the heme and the blood pigments and turn them into carcinogens. So meanwhile, uh, because the person's usually constipated and the fecal mass is moving so slowly through the colon, these carcinogens have a lot of time to rub on the colon wall. And indeed, it's no accident that most of the colon cancers happen in the descending and sigmoid colon uh, where all this exposure time happens. Well, a, um, a whole food vegan diet it takes all that away and it actually promotes bacteria that heal the gut wall and, uh, and prevent cancer. In case you haven't heard, we are on the verge of bankruptcy from a number of, um, of uh, sources and our healthcare system is a major driving force of this. Uh, and I would take every physician uh, in the country, at the hospital administrator, but certainly my fellow MDs, and I would say, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what your specialty is. If you're a surgeon, an internist, an endocrinologist, rheumatologist, dermatologist, pediatrician, the vast majority of people who are sitting in your waiting room are there because of what they are eating. And until we deal with it, we're, the, we're going to be chasing this tiger that is loose on the uh, countryside uh, with no hope of catching it. We've got to get real about the cause of these diseases. Dr. Milton Mills was eloquent last night laying out the list of diseases that are directly driven by a meat and dairy based diet. All the inflammatory diseases, acne, psoriasis, asthma, inflammatory arthritis, bowel disease, colitis, Crohn's, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, uh, constipation, diabetes, autoimmune autoimmunity. It's from the American diet. I watch with dismay as our National Institutes of Health spend billions, tens of billions of dollars looking for the cause of obesity. The cause of type 2 diabetes, the cause of blood arteries, makes me want to take the biggest soapbox I can find, plop it down in the middle of Washington, D.C., and yell, It's the food! It's the food! It's what they're eating! Look at what they're eating! But if you can prevail on your patients and turn the light on and work with them to adopt the plant based diet, it's miraculous what happens. And the transformations are stunning. And it's the most fun type of medicine to practice. When I was a young doc, we would uh, have people in the ICU, oh, we have to put them on beta blockers for pressure and anti rhythmics for its heart rhythm and uh, antibiotics for its uh, for the artery inflammation. And uh, we, boy, we'd load them up with pills when, by the time they left. Now, you get them on a whole food plant-based diet and, and watch these wonderful changes happen, their whole body transforms. And then the fun is you can say, oh, we can get them on that pill. Oh, let's stop that one. Oh, it doesn't need that one anymore. Oh, let's get rid of that one. Oh, it doesn't need that one. Now the fun is get them off their medication. Get them uh, canceling that surgery and turn them into lean, healthy people that I don't want to see again. And uh, that is My colleagues have only opened their doors and their minds to it. Uh, medicine will become fun again when patients get healthy. 
So these are the main reasons I would tell my physician colleagues why you want to open the door in your mind to a whole food plant-based diet. But what about Joe Sixpack? Um, well, what, what's going to convince him? Well, he hates being overweight. He, I don't care what he says. When he gets out in the, in the shower and he looks in the mirror, he detests what he sees. Well, as I just said, this is the easiest way to lose weight because you can eat all the food you want and you still wind up uh, lean and healthy. This is guilt-free eating. You don't have to count calories. You don't have to put portion control. All that stuff is ridiculous. If you want to go back for a third bowl of vegetable soup, who cares? It's vegetable soup. It's all fiber and water. You've got to pee it out. That's the stick to it. And that's the beauty of this. And the food is glorious. All these wonderful soups and stews and chilies and blue lots of pizzolas and chowders and grits. It's a delicious, wonderful cuisine. It's not lettuce and raisins and out of the, you know, uh, being a social outcast. Uh, if you're not familiar with dietitian Jeff Novick, uh, he's got a couple of nice uh, videos. His fast food, uh, the basics and down the basics, on how to whip up a dynamite chili in 10 minutes that you can eat off of for three days in the fridge. So you only have to cook twice a week. Uh, you can these big bad soups and chilies. <clears throat> Um, I tell them get a crock pot and uh, take all your ingredients, uh, uh, all the, the water, the rice, the beans, and the veggies, and the, and the uh, seasonings. Uh, put it in your crock pot, put it on, uh, put the lid on, hit the button, go to bed. <laughs> it cooks all night. Next morning, there, there it is. Uh, if you're going to be home all day, turn it down to low. And every time you walk into the kitchen, you'll get a bowl of soup and chow down and have all you want. This is guilt-free eating. My bad, they say, oh, but I work, and there's only lousy food in the cafeteria, and I'm hungry when I get on the way home when I stop. I say, fair enough, don't, don't play victim to this, uh, to that. Take your healthy food with you. Uh, get yourself down the corner, get a little cooler pack, and before you leave the kitchen door, three things go in the kitchen, in the cooler pack. A big wide mouth thermos jug, two or three of them if you'd like, full of your fresh soup. A big salad that's with a no oil dressing. And a container of cut up melon chunks and mango slices and grapes and blackberries, bite sized fruit. And you eat your way through your work day. You take a polar bear chili or your soup and throw in a couple of grapes and on to your next bread, on to your next task. And by the time you get home, if you've eaten uh, you know, three thermoses of soup and a big salad and uh, some fruit, the golden arch is going to take you on the way home. <laughs> and uh, uh, here Jeff Novick's uh, one on fast food burgers and fries. He shows you how to make. You know, whip up one Saturday morning about 30 really delicious lentil, veggie, quinoa, spice burgers or whatever. Put them in the freezer. I've got a freezer full of veggie burgers. Bring them out, eat them, eat them. Make life easy for yourself. <laughs> so, tell him it's the quickest way to lose weight because he's been struggling with it. He's done Weight Watchers and uh, OA and all that stuff. He, he just wants to eat. So, you can let him do that. Second, you know, get him, tell him you want to get off these pills. They hate being on the pills. Uh, and they don't take them. Studies clearly show you can put them on statins and hypertensive agents and all stuff. Within six months, 80% of them they stop. They're not even taking them anyway. And they're expensive. How would you like to get off your blood pressure medications? How would you like to get off your metformin? How would you like to get off your anti-inflammatory? You can offer that to them. Their energy level goes up. I'm tired all the time. Yeah, they're, they're, it's like flipping around a 50 pound bag of rocks wherever they go. They're carrying 50 pounds of fat on them. As they trim down, man, they, they put that bag of rocks down. They've got energy. Totally feels wonderful. And not only does their energy level get better, but so did their function in the bedroom. Um, what happens? Well, there's a law of physics by Seal's Law that says, don't, don't let your eyes glaze over. But the quantity of liquid flowing through a tube will increase by the fourth power of the increase of the radius. And that means that uh, vessel one here has a, has, a, has a radius of x. Uh, if you make it twice as big, the water flowing through it does not go up by a factor of two. It goes up by a factor of two times, two times, two times two. It goes up by a factor of 16. Um, and you know this, if you're sucking juice up through a skinny straw, even a straw twice as big will make a huge increase in the amount of liquid that you get up. That's Boisil's law. Well, it happens everywhere in the body, not just juice through a straw, but blood going through blood vessels. As the arteries start to open up just a little bit, you get this huge increase in blood flow all over the body, to the brain, to the heart, to the legs, and uh, to the, uh, to the gen genitals, as the guys uh, find out much of their delight in the bedroom. So blood vessels everywhere start opening up, and it happens quickly, within weeks. Their self-image improves. He doesn't look like looking like he is, like an old guy that nobody looks at. Um, they get leaner, their confidence goes up, and they start noticing changes. And you know uh, 
it was subtle, and they looked around to make sure no was listening. You know what they noticed? Doc, I don't smell so bad anymore. My wife says my body odor is it's not, it used to be really rank. She says I smell really sweet. Is it my imagination? No, it's not. <clears throat> when you eat the flesh of animals, the bacteria in your gut turns the, uh, the many of the proteins in the uh, well, in the meat, into foul-smelling uh, molecules with lovely names like cadaverine and putrescine. And these are, these are well, for real, they well. um, And these are foul-smelling, and they're fat-soluble, so they get into the skin oils, and it comes out on their skin. These guys with a manly body odor that's from the steak and the burgers that he's been eating. Well, on a vegan diet, they'll, they'll disappear, and so body odor goes away. Then he wants to make sure the doors uh, close, and he says, nah, I don't know, it's my imagination. They, and I'm surprised they use a scientific term here. They say, you know what else has gotten better? What? My farts don't smell anymore. <laughs> well, how can that be? Very simple. When you're eating eggs and flesh, you're eating a huge amount of sulfur compounds that the bacteria in your gut turn into these foul-smelling sulfides and were captains of smell shedding. Now, well, on a vegan diet, you eat very little of that, and so even the intestinal gas yeah, smells better. They really find it smelling sweet, and they start looking better, and they uh, uh, and it certainly improves their uh, their self control, their self image. And they find that they have more time and money. It's expensive to be a medical patient, to spend your whole day, week going from the internist to the cardiologist to the endocrinologist to the orthopedist to the rheumatologist. This takes time, this takes money, these are expensive drugs. Well, suddenly, they, are, they cancel their appointment with the rheumatologist, they cancel the endocrinologist, their diabetes goes away. And suddenly, they got time and money for its own fun. And finally, the food tastes great. And, you know, I don't eat it, it's all that vegan, it's all so bland. Man, make it Italian style, Chinese style, East Indian, Thai, go crazy with the cuisine. You know, don't go on board with the oil and the salt. But tell them that, you know, make it delicious food. And, and the food is really, really key. It's got to taste good. Uh, my, my hats off and my uh, admiration to all the chefs out there and the food preparers who make this food taste good because it is absolutely pivotal. So, Joe Sixpack in some ways is equally, well, he's really more important than the doctors there. Uh, is he hopeless? No, he's far from hopeless. Uh, actually, this is a patient really in my medical practice uh, who uh, was, got tired of uh, looking like this and he jumped on a vegan diet within 12 weeks. Uh, turned out to be a whole other guy uh, with no bad um, and, uh, and he's been a devoted vegan ever since. So, uh, so I've summarized uh, the things that uh, I think are the most convincing points to tell both the health practitioners and the end patients that, uh, that we've just gone through here. So, the most convincing argument, here's that word argument, and I stiffen and bridle a little bit when I see the word argument. I have to uh, rely on our, one of our great teachers, Mahatma Gandhi, who said, example is not the best way to teach. Example is the only way to teach. Yeah. Before you start wagging, wagging your finger, and you should, you should, you should, turn that, that hand back at yourself in the mirror there. Just do it yourself. Just make up a dynamite chili or a, a, a stew with, hey, I'm chili on the stove, God, help yourself. Don't say anything, just start doing it yourself. Hey, sell in the fridge, help yourself. Um, steam up some greens, make a chili, you know, make some really dynamite food, and just start eating it yourself. Because there's so many people saying, oh, my husband's never going to go for this. My kids aren't going to go. Oh, my daughter-in-law's going to think. It's nothing to do with them. If God forbid you get a heart attack or a stroke or breast cancer, it's only you in that hospital bed. It's not your husband. It's not your daughter-in-law. It's not the guys at work. It's only you. This is serious business. You only get one to go around this life. You don't want to spend it as a medical patient. You start doing it yourself. You know, watch what it is. You may get a little jo jo you know, joshing at the start of the end. But as the, as the days go on, the weeks go by, you watch what the, what the spouse and the kids and the people are raised, they stop. But when you start transforming, they stop making snide remarks there. Uh, they start saying, hey, that smells pretty good. Mind if I have some? Your progress and your example will be a gift to your friends and your family, and you don't need to say a word. Don't get into big conflicts about anything. It's not worth it. Just let your example do the talking. So, 
vegan food diplomacy. Know the facts. What, everything you heard t t today and yesterday, these are profound facts about what's happening with the water and global warming. And this is there. You've got to know this stuff. It's so important. It puts that air of authority and urgency in your voice. So this is here. We, we are running out of time here. And uh, we owe the kids. We've screwed up their world. It's their world. We owe them a rescue. And you're going to do that by helping everybody uh, turn the vegan light on in their, in their minds and in their heart. But the food is really key. They'll, they, I don't want to do the, the, the taste bland or whatever, but man, you put that tofu lasagna in your mouth, and their eyes get big. Oh, oh, I could eat that. Oh, that's a vegan food. Oh, that's not so bad. I could eat that. Yes. And now, you, now I can make some progress. You put that delicious vegan food in their mouth, and you change their world, and you start opening their mind and their heart to a new and healthier way to live. So, um, so those are the main points that I wanted to, uh, to cover here. There's a lot to say here. It ultimately comes down to delicious food and the desire in your heart for things to be better. These people that you love and people you haven't even met yet. You gotta love them too. It's all us. There is no them. There never has been. There has been an illusion since day one. We're one family. We're one tribe. We need each other and we need everybody to be healthy and happy. There is, there's no adversaries here, there's just people who haven't woken up yet. But the desire, that, I mean, we're all humans. This, this world needs healing. Your, your life needs healing. The people you love, their lives need healing. Uh, if, you, if you saw a little girl fall off her bike and scrape her knee, you'd reach over there, your heart would, would open and you'd reach over and you'd scoop her up and you'd get hunger and you'd want to let her know her world's going to be okay. That essence of healing is what is needed on every level from the person you see in the mirror, that person needs to be loved and healed, the people you're making breakfast for, the people that work, the people on the news, that everybody's in need of healing. And it starts with a, with a heart that wants, them to be, wants things to be better and a mind that knows that a, that a life of ahimsa, a life of dynamic harmlessness, a life who's manifesting purity of heart, that, that the, the four most important words you can utter in any situation are, how can I help? What can I do? How can I make things better? Because people need your love. And it starts by the example you, you set in eating a vegan diet, talking about it, and, uh, and uh, truly becoming a person of peace, which is really uh, what all this is about. So I am so honored to have been here and be able to address you. I, inspired. And what you heard about Margaret Mead, who said, never underestimate the power of a small group of determined people to change the course of human history. And indeed, that's the only thing that ever has. But now with the internet, now with Facebook and Twitter and all this, and the, the energy of the young people, if there's anything that gives me hope, it's young people and the internet. And they have an energy and a technology to get this word out, and it's stunning how quickly things can change. I grew up with the Berlin Wall, that big, dark, ugly edifice of fear and totalitarianism, and it and was stunning to see that wall come down within weeks. That's the power of truth, that's the power of the heart. So now we've got to help us, to, to whole, help all the human family turn its page on this dark, dark chapter of animal eating, embrace all of life. And, uh, and, and we will be the generation of transformation that save the world and save the future. So I'm honored to be part of it. Go out and do your part. up to this point um, has treated nutrition worse than a poor sister. It was downright contempt. The doctors, uh, when I went to medical school, the Pleistocene age, uh, we were taught that we were real medicine. Um, we're in the emergency room fixing broken arms and sewing up lacerations and delivering babies. Nutrition, boring. We send, send them to the dietitian, she'll give them a 2,000 calorie diet, don't bother. So the older doctors were not taught about nutrition. They have contempt for it. They don't understand the power of it. 
And it ultimately comes down to the most venal of reasons is their own filet mignon that they want to have last tonight in the lobster thermidor they had uh, last night. And they don't, it means they have to change their own diet, you know, looking at their own refrigerator. They don't want to do that uh, for all the reasons that, that you know well. So it's a matter of ignorance and inertia and, and arrogance and defiance. And it's an ultimate trade. I'm embarrassed from my profession. Is it a matter of uh, and, um, companies paying them? I'm sorry? Is it a matter of um, I don't think it's so much the drug companies, I'm just saying it's, it's about insurance companies. Well, that's a, that's a valid point because the insurance companies pay only for doing things, for cutting people and putting needles into them. Talking to them, they don't pay for it. Um, and I spend an hour with the patient doing this nutritional counseling, I get $22. You can't, you can't keep the lights on for that. Um, so absolutely. There. And the insurance companies are fools because if they would put the money out for the counseling, they wouldn't have to pay for the corner every bypass right. uh, down the road for not talking right. to the patient about it. Now, um, now Kaiser um, is giving lip service to plant-based diets because their stockholders are starting to demand that if, if you can do nutritional counseling, they're going to save billions in surgery not done, scans not ordered, etc. So if, there, if anything's going to make a change, one, it will be the insurance compensation and, and, and go to the Kaiser website and Put in plant-based diet, you'll see that, that they are at least getting lip service to it. When my patients go to Kaiser and I ask them, "Did your doctor, the, the, the primary care doctor you saw, that really talked about plant-based?" They said, "I'll mention yeah." But at least it's on their website. At least they've opened the door to it. Um, but also, um, the uh, let's see, uh, what else can I say? Uh, oh, uh, the hope again is with the young people. I'm, I'm getting reports that the first-year med students are demanding. Uh, nutritional cl classes in nutrition and demanding classes in plant-based nutrition because, yeah, because when I went to med school, when we, when we learned about atherosclerosis, the, the, uh, all those two words, etiology unknown, we don't know the cause, maybe it's genetics, we don't know the cause. Well, you can't tell the first year med students now we don't know the cause of clogged arteries, they know, but come on. And so, so they are now demanding uh, some plant-based nutrition courses, so that's going to change. So the wheels are starting to turn, but if the patients keep asking the doctors, um, it's also going to, to lubricate the change here. So the patients need to get educated and ask their doctors a question, but know that the wheels are starting to turn and the insurance uh, compensation is going to uh, promote it. And the young med students, uh, we've got to wait for the old guys to die off there, the young med students are going to get some better brand of medicine in the near future.